Um, well, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart, dumber than we think we are, um, by a lot. So, this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, or very close to, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows. And the rate of improvement is exponential. Um, you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player to then beating the European world champion, who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Dole 4-5, um, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then, uh, then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go 100 to zero. And Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, you literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. Um, nobody expected that rate of improvement. If you ask those, so, those same experts uh, who think AI is not progressing at the rate that I'm saying, I think you will find that their predictions for things like Go and, and other, and, and other uh, AI advancements have, uh, their, their batting average is quite weak. It's not good. I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. I mean, I think one should generally go on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. And therefore, there needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. And at a certain point, we will build machines that are smarter than we are. And once we have machines that are smarter than we are, they will begin to improve themselves. And then we risk what the mathematician I.J. Good called an intelligence explosion, that the, the process could get away from us. Now this is often caricatured, as I have here, as a fear that armies of malicious robots will attack us. But that isn't the most likely scenario. It's not that our machines will become spontaneously malevolent. The concern is really that we will build machines that are so much more competent than we are that the slightest divergence between their goals and our own could destroy us. Just think about how we relate to ants. Okay, we don't hate them. We don't go out of our way to harm them. In fact, sometimes we take pains not to harm them. We just we step over them on the sidewalk. But whenever their presence seriously conflicts with one of our goals, let's say when constructing a building like this one, we annihilate them without a qualm. The concern is that we will one day build machines that... The other thing that's worrying, frankly, is that imagine the, imagine the best case scenario. So imagine we, we hit upon a design of superintelligent AI that has no safety concerns. We have the perfect design the first time around. It, it's as though we've been handed an oracle that behaves exactly as intended. Well, this machine would be the perfect labor-saving device. It can design the machine, that can build the machine, that can do any physical work powered by sunlight, more or less for the cost of raw materials. Okay, so, so we're talking about the end of human drudgery. We're also talking about the end of most intellectual work. So what would apes like ourselves do in this circumstance? Now, one of the, the, the most frightening things, in my view, at this moment, 
are the kinds of things that AI researchers say when they want to be reassuring. And, and the most common reason we're told not to worry is time. This is all a long way off, don't you know? This is, this is probably 50 or 100 years away. One researcher has said, worrying about AI safety is like worrying about overpopulation on Mars. Okay, if intelligence is just a matter of information processing, and we continue to improve our machines, we will produce some form of superintelligence. And we have no idea how long it will take us to create the conditions to do that safely. Let me say that again. We have no idea how long it will take us to create the conditions to do that safely. And if you haven't noticed, 50 years is not what it used to be. And this is 50 years in months. This is how long we've had the iPhone. This is how long The Simpsons has been on television. 50 years is not that much time to meet one of the greatest challenges our species will ever face. And once again, we, we seem to be failing to have a, an appropriate emotional response to what we have every reason to believe is coming. The, the, the uh, computer scientist Stuart Russell has a nice analogy here. He said, imagine that we received a message from an alien civilization, which read, people of Earth, we will arrive on your planet in 50 years. Get ready. And now we're just counting down the months until the mothership lands? Okay. We would feel a little more urgency than we do. Artificial intelligence, AI, a commonly accepted definition is a robot that can do tasks like a human or better. There are two types of AI. First is a weak AI. For example, IBM's Watson would be considered as a weak AI. Watson relies on natural language governed by rules of grammars, context, and culture. Basically just taking a large amount of information and using that information to make decisions. Another example is Siri. There are many examples of weak artificial intelligence that we use on a daily basis. For example, when we use our credit card, an AI algorithm will have to approve or decline that transaction. GPS in our cars, spam filters, recommender systems on Amazon.com, Google Translate service, and the main one, which is the search engine. All use AI algorithms. A strong AI is a robot that can function without any human assistance. In this video, I will attempt to address the question of is strong artificial intelligence beneficial to, hum to mankind's future? Strong artificial intelligence development will create the issue of massive unemployment, the need for wealth distribution, and change in human behavior. The topic of artificial intelligence may sound like something from a sci-fi movie, but it is a serious discussion. In the discussion of artificial intelligence, one controversial issue has been if it is possible to program ethics into a machine, and have that machine make decisions with serious consequences. On the one hand, Computer scientists and artificial intelligence researchers argue that it is only a matter of time before that idea will become a reality. On the other hand, computer scientists and artificial intelligence researchers are not fully considering that that decision will be affecting the majority of society. So it is important for a large discussion with policymakers, lawyers, economists, philosophers, faith leaders, engineers, and computer scientists to take place. Humanity engineering its own extinction has been a popular storyline in Hollywood, with movies like The Matrix, Ex Machina, and the Terminator franchise. Nick Bostrom, an author of Super Intelligent, said, Before the prospect of an intelligence explosion, we humans are like small children playing with a bomb. We have little idea when the detonation will occur, Though if we hold the device to our ear, we can hear a faint ticking sound. Bostrom also makes it clear that the people who don't have problems with artificial intelligence tend to work in the field of artificial intelligence.
John Dinar, whose research interests are on philosophy, science, engineering, ethics, writes on his paper, Will life be worth living in a world without work? Technological unemployment and the meaning of life. He states that the main argument can be simply stated. Although there are reasons to worry about the societal impacts of technological unemployment, there are also reasons to embrace it. The so-called anti-war critique allow us to see the myriad ways in which our lives could be improved by substituting robotic labor for human labor. We would be free to pursue our own conception of the good life. Our health and well-being could be enhanced. At the same time, the philosophical understanding of what it takes to live a meaningful life shows us various ways in which the automation of labor could rob us of meaningfulness. Without jobs, people will lose the incentive to work and be productive. If people don't work and contribute to society, then that will strip them of meaningful life. Also, there aren't many jobs left due to automation. People will have to look for gigs or explore their artistic side of themselves for income. A good example of jobs being mechanized is in agriculture and manufacturing. Although there is a high demand in those industries, it's not for human labor. The loss of income can make people bored and depressed. There are core values like courage, self-respect, accountability, and integrity. But even these values vary within individuals. As machines get smarter and smarter, it becomes more important that their goals, that they are trying to achieve with their decisions, are closely aligned with human values, says UC Berkeley computer scientist Professor Stuart Russell, co-author of the standard textbook on artificial intelligence. Also gives us a good analogy of value to the human. He says that it's important that the, ro the robots install with values that will tell it just because the fridge is empty, the robot doesn't put the cat in the oven. Jeffrey Lin, the lead designer of Social Systems of League of Legends, a cognitive neuroscientist, wrote a paper called How Artificial Intelligence is Reinventing the Art of Influencing Human Behavior. His goal is to reduce toxic behavior in online gaming communities. For example, he stated that when players experience persistent abuse or toxic behavior in a game, they are on average 320% more likely to leave the game and never come back. Although in this example the ability to influence one's behavior is just simply to make a comfortable environment for gamers. It is safe to assume that this could be used for bad purposes. A good example of AI influence being used for the wrong reason is during the election, there were many people hired to misinform the public to get the voters on their side. So influencing human behavior for the wrong reasons will become a huge issue. It is one thing to state all the facts, it's another to misinform for an agenda. And the election was just a small glimpse of the dangers this can bring. Deep Blue, a chess playing computer developed by IBM is okay, but when it comes to more advanced robot and allowing it to act on its own without human assistance, that would be where I draw the line. I also believe it is wrong to create a robot for military usage, because when it comes down to killing another human, it is not right for a robot to be making a decision on taking a human life. I'm gonna miss the good old days. One good old days when people were killed by other people. It's okay as long as the human is guiding the robot, which then the human is responsible for the robot's actions. Currently, we are starting with autonomous vehicles, which seems convenient for companies who are saving a lot of money. We already know that there are numerous benefits for the environment with having intelligent cars and smart traffic control. There are environmentalists who think that automation will be good for the environment. 
I don't think the main argument is whether we should do this or not, but is it ethical? Do we need to understand ethical codes? It's very clear that this is the most important part of this advancement. There are many that believe that we will have to create a new ethical framework for the development of strong AI. I strongly believe that we won't be needing a new ethical framework. When it comes to making AI safe, private organizations or companies will have to cooperate with the public and inform their intent with this technological development. Because a lot of the advancements are kept secret. Your average person will also argue that this will not affect me. I will probably not even be alive to see this. So why should I care? Well, when it comes to the time period of all of this, no one really knows. So it is important to have a discussion before it sneaks into our daily lives. The naysayers will make a bold comment like anything a human can do can be programmed. There is just one thing only humans can do, that is the ability for moral reasoning.